today we are going to talk about the coverings of the membranous coverings of the central nervous system right there are three types of membranes which are enveloping around the brain and the spinal cord right let me show you that by a simple diagram first of all suppose here is your central nervous system of course you recognize these structures right now the first covering which is very very intimately covering the central nervous system is pia mater pia mater is the connective tissue layer which is highly vascular it is highly vascular very delicate very thin very closely covering all the surfaces of brain and spinal cord right and this pia mater this moves throughout with the central nervous system right so we can say that this black layer is pia mater what is meant by the pia mater what is meant by the word pia and mater yes who will tell me anyone yes pia means soft very good pia means soft and mater means mother so it's a soft mother taking care of the central nervous system pia mater is the most close very layer of the connective tissue covering the central nervous system this layer is highly vascular and it is very very soft right that is why it is called pia mater pia mean yes soft mater mean mother a very soft mother taking care of the central nervous system right outside the pia mater there is next covering and this covering is called arachnoid mater this is the outer covering outside the pia mater and this covers the central nervous system and this is called arachnoid arachnoid mater what is the meaning of arachnoid what is the meaning of spider right so we can say this is another mother taking care of the central nervous system protecting the central nervous system but when you look at arachnoid mater it look like a spider why it looks like a spider because it has multiple connective tissue trabeculae right and these trabeculae are connecting the arachnoid mater with the pia mater right these are connective tissue trabeculae is that clear now outside this there is dura mater what is the layer outside dura mater and dura mater is a very very tough and strong membranous structure it's made of connective tissue of course but it is very tough it is very strong right and that is why it is called dura dura mean strong tough hard right so dura mater right in this way there are three coverings of the central nervous system there is pia mater then there is arachnoid mater and then there is dura mater i will draw them again now you have to tell me the names of these coverings let's suppose here is central nervous system right now this is the first layer coming i'm changing the colors so that you have to really think what is the first layer yeah. yes please yeah. pia mater is it uh, vascular or non vascular vascular highly vascular then what is the second layer Arachnoid. yes please arachnoid. arachnoid and it is relatively non vascular and outside that a very strong layer what is that layer yes dura dura is that clear right and arachnoid has trabeculae now 
And before we really go into detail, I would like to talk about some very important clinical relevance with these coverings. Have you heard of the terms called epidural hemorrhage? Yes. Epidural hemorrhage. Then there is another term which is called, yes, subdural hemorrhage. Then there is another term which is used for, yes, another hemorrhage. We have to talk about these all hemorrhages, epidural, subdural, then there is subarachnoid hemorrhage, arachnoid hemorrhage, and then there is intracerebral hemorrhage. Intra cerebral hemorrhage. Before I really go into detail, I would like my students should be very, very crystal clear about these different type of hemorrhages because these different four types of hemorrhages are at different locations, in different spaces, and different places, and clinically they have different causes and different consequences. Right? First of all, we will talk about epidural hemorrhage. Where the epidural hemorrhage occur? Epidural hemorrhages or epidural hematoma or epidural bleeding is in epidural space. Now we have to see what is the epidural space? Where is the epidural space? So who will tell me where is the epidural space? Yes, we are talking about epidural hemorrhages in epidural space. So who knows where is exactly in this diagram epidural space? Anyone? Is there nothing? Yeah? Excellent. Very good. Let me tell you what he is saying. Let's make a more simple diagram. That this is your skull bone. Right? This is skull bone. It's a very simple diagram. And here is your, what is this? Dura matter. Right? Dura matter basically has two layers. When we talk about in relation to the skull. Dura matter has two layers. One layer is very much attached with the bone. Right? This is the layer of the dura matter which is very much, I must draw, that it is sticky with the bone. And this layer which is sticking with the bone, this is called periosteal layer of the dura matter. This is periosteal layer of the dura matter. Then dura matter has one more layer, which is called meningeal layer. The second is called, this is meningeal layer. And this is periosteal layer. Now, this is the meningeal layer of dura matter, right? At some places, it becomes separated from the periosteal layer and make a space. There is a space here. At some places, naturally, physiologically, these two layers separate and they make a space. And in this space, this space is lined by endothelial Yes, what is it? Endothelial cells. And this endothelial cells lined space is meant for a very special purpose. Through this space, venous blood is running. Right? Again, let me repeat. This is meningeal layer. This is periosteal. And at some places, meningeal and periosteal separate. And the channel is made and through this channel, blood is running physiologically. This space is called, this through which the blood is running, this is called dural sinus. That within the dura matter, there is a sinus through which the blood is running. So we call it venous dural sinuses. What we call them? Venous dural sinuses. These are natural. I will teach you those things later in tomorrow's lecture. Venous dural sinuses. But usually, at other places, these two layers are very close to each other. This layer and the other layer. Meningeal layer and periosteal layers are very, very close to each other. 
they are almost attached, sticking to each other. But by some pathological process, we can separate it and create a space. Again, listen. These two layers are very, very close. Except at, what is this? Venous dural sinuses. Right? They are very close. Right? But sometimes they can be separated. Because normally, physiologically, space is not there. We say that there is no actual space. There is potential space. When there are two layers in the body, there are any two layers in the body, they are sticking with each other, right? But with some pathological process, we can create a space, but normally there is no space. We say there is no actual space, there is only potential, potential space. Mm -hmm. So between these two layers of the dura matter, actually, normally, there is potential, potential space when we talk about the skull and relationship of dura matter. Am I clear? Now. But, very important, vessels run through this area. Very important blood vessels run through this area. Who will tell me the blood vessels which run at this point? Okay, let me make a more clear diagram so that you remember those vessels. That there are some blood vessels which run at this area. Of course, there is artery and there is a vein along with it. Yeah, meningeal arteries and veins. Excellent. Who said it? Good. Good. Irene? Good. So meningeal arteries and meningeal veins, which supply the blood to the skull bone as well as mainly to meninges, meningeal arteries and veins run between the skull bone and what is this layer? Meningeal layer. Or you can say meningeal arteries and meningeal veins run between the, what is this? Periosteal and meningeal dura mater. Some people assume periosteal layer should be taken as skull part. Right? So this is the meningeal layer of dura mater. Now, these meningeal vessels, exactly where they run, let me explain. Let's see who recognizes these landmarks first of all. Here is your nose. I hope you understand what are these. Ears. And like me a little bit here. Now, don't laugh at your teacher. Right? I have, do have some here. Now listen. Now what is happening? Anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa and posterior cranial fossa. Of course you must be knowing at least this foramen. What is this? Foramen magnum, thanks for knowing it. Okay, this is of course, what is that? Salar trashika. Pituitary gland sit over here like this. Yeah. Now, this is middle cranial fossa. Right? From here, through foramen spinosum, meningeal, middle meningeal artery comes out and it gives an interior branch which runs like this and posterior branches. Now, this artery is running in a groove between this is the bone and this is the dura mater. Or to be very accurate, this artery is running between two layers of the dura mater. To be very accurate. And this space, this is the artery running. Am I clear? Now this artery is exactly running at this space. This is a branch of, interior branch of middle meningeal artery. This is very important branch. Why? Because if you hit someone at temple, if you hit someone at temple, the bones here are very weak. There is squamous part of temporal bone and there is squamous part of parietal bone. And these bones here are very, very weak. And under this area, there are meningeal arteries, vessels. And if you get an injury here, if these bones are fractured, right, and within the bony groove, these vessels are running, these vessels are ruptured or lacerated, and a bleeding start. And this bleeding or blood which leaks out, it accumulates between the skull and the dura mater. Right? So, what really happens if this vessels rupture? Yes. What will happen? Hematoma will go like this. All this blood is, what is this? Hemorrhage, blood is accumulating here. 
right now this is out of meningeal layer right so we call it hemorrhage is within the epidural space please don't confuse this hemorrhage with the hemorrhage later on i will explain which occurs at this point hemorrhage at this point number 1 this is epidural hemorrhage right later on i will explain that here is what what is this arachnoid right and hemorrhage can occur between du uh, dura and arachnoid at this point that is a different hemorrhage entirely with different causes with different consequences right so right now we are concentrating only in epidural hemorrhage some authors call epidural hemorrhage as extra dural hemorrhage also because they say the truly dura mater is a membranous layer right so this hemorrhage right this one this is epidural as well as it can be considered as yes, extra dural hemorrhage now if someone asks you that what are the causes of this type of hemorrhage you can say trauma to the skull injury to the skull most commonly on the temple right especially when it involves the ruptures or bleeding from the which arteries anterior, anterior branch of middle meningeal artery and vein am i clear really now very special point about this epidural hemorrhage is you know the cause right you know the vessel which is involved now little bit clinical so what is the very special thing about this which really if you as a doctor you know that you can save lives the special thing is something called lucid interval in the clinical picture let me tell you what is lucid interval usually what happens person gets the injury is that right he gets the injury and if he becomes unconscious if a person gets injury and injury and he gets unconscious if there is no bleeding he should recover rapidly is that right listen now carefully if someone get a head injury here number 1 he should not be unconscious number 2 if he become unconscious and there is no hemorrhage within the brain if he is unconscious due to contusional injury to the brain substance he should recover very rapidly but a person who has hemorrhage like this his clinical picture is different either he becomes unconscious due to initial injury and then recovers after the recovery he again gradually start falling into deeper level of lower conscious level you have to remember this that initial injury if it produces unconsciousness normally should recover rapidly or it may not produce unconsciousness right but if there is epidural hemorrhage then gradually over the hours or days or even weeks patient progressively goes into deeper and deeper level of falling level of conscious unconsciousness right so we can say this interval between that initial event and later on development of the drowsiness and unconsciousness this time interval is called lucid interval what is it called lucid interval it is very very typical of epidural hemorrhage it's very very typical of epidural hemorrhage that for example person is brought to the hospital and he is progressively going into deeper levels of coma and there is some history of head injury right and people who, who bring him they may narrate that after the head injury he initially he did not lost the consciousness and after few hours or days he started or they say initially he lost the conscious level he recovered and then later on he started losing it am i clear to everyone no problem here another important point about this type of hemorrhage is of course i'm teaching doctors that point is important all of you are going to be doctor am i right yes. right another very important point is when you suspect some problem like this immediately do the ct scan right on ct scan if this hemorrhage is there there will be you know 
hematoma visible. The blood is very very dense. It makes dense image, darker image than the brain substance. Right? But this image is very special configuration of this image, of this hematoma, which helps you to differentiate this hematoma from other hematomas. What is special thing about this hematoma image? The special thing is that dura matter is attaching with the skull tightly. Because dura matter is normally attaching with the skull tightly when once bleeding occurs between the skull and the dura matter, do you think blood will easily spread or it has to produce ten tension? It will produce tension, right? So, it will start producing tension and making a very important hematoma which forcefully separates the dura matter from the skull. But as dura matter is stripped away, a point will come where dura matter is attached with the suture of the, suppose these are the skull bones. And you know in between the skull bones there are, what is there? Sutural ligaments. Sutural ligaments. At the sutural ligaments, dura matter is tightly held. At the sutural ligaments, dura matter is tightly sticking with the skull. So blood cannot escape into that direction. Then as blood is tracking down here, maybe this is another sutural, another bone and in between the bone there is suture and this is another sutural ligament. So again this is very tightly held here. So what really happens that dura matter will be stripped like this, right? But dura matter cannot be lifted from this sutural point attachment point and dura matter cannot be lifted away from this point. So what really happens that the shape of this hematoma is now you see like that. It is like a lens. This shape is like a lens. On one side there is bone, other side there are dural attachment. So this is very very diagnostic point that if you suspect hemorrhage in the cranial cavity and you take MRI or you do the CT scan and on that you find the hematoma is making lens shape, lens shape or biconvex arrangement, right? Or hematoma is specially abruptly blocked by sutural points, you must think this is what kind of hematoma or what, what type of hemorrhage? Epidural. Epidural hemorrhage. I hope you'll remember that. And treatment is not that difficult if you diagnose it right, transfer it to the neurosurgeons and usually they produce a burr hole here and evacuate the clot. Any question up to this? No. So this is epidural hemorrhage. Again, epidural space in the cranial cavity, is it a real space or potential space? Potential, potential space. Is that right? And which arteries bleed there? Meningeal arteries and veins. Is that clear? Right. Now we come to the next subdural hemorrhage. Right. We have to differentiate this with the subdural hemorrhage. Okay. I will draw subdural here so that you can compare and contrast the both. This is, what was this? Epidural. Is that right? Now we will come to the concept of subdural hemorrhage. Few minutes spent on this concept may help you to save lives. Suppose this is the bone, skull bone and what was this layer, peri, austral layer and what is this layer please, meningeal layer, right? And after that, yeah, what was here in? Please, what is this here? Arachnoid matter. Arachnoid matter, isn't it? And there is no fun in telling that there must be, of course, cerebral hemisphere here. Central nervous system. And there is no fun in telling that here is pia matter. Am I clear? Now, you have to develop a very clear concept 
what is the cause of hemorrhage in subdural area for that you have to understand anatomy of certain vessels there are veins which drain the blood from the cerebral hemisphere those veins as a group are called cerebral veins what are those veins cerebral, cerebral veins now let's now where the cerebral veins drain this is cerebral vein which is draining from multiple point and taking the blood out of the brain and then it will pass through pia mater cerebral vein will pass through pia mater then it will pass through arachnoid that's very good after passing through pia mater it has to pass through yes arachnoid mater and through the arachnoid mater then it passes perforates what is this point dura mater and eventually it drain into venous sinus i'll make this vein more clear what is this vein this is an example of cerebral vein right and cerebral veins again they are from cerebral hemisphere going out pierce the pia mater pierce the arachnoid mater pierce the dura mater and drain into different venous dural venous sinuses is that clear now first i tell you the space we were talk, going to talk about which hemorrhage yes subdural, subdural hemorrhage subdural hemorrhage should be between which two areas 